Duncan Jones, welcome to the Game Informer Show, sir. Hello, very nice to meet you guys. Yeah, digitally meet you. It's a real honor to have you. We don't have too many filmmakers on, so uh, it's impressive to have one of your caliber on the show. Oh, that's very kind of you. Uh, I, I hope I do. I hope I do it justice. <laughs> do you feel like you're doing it justice? <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll start. We'll see. Okay. At least I'm a, I'm a new. You know, I'm a generation of, uh, of of peoples that grew up playing games. So hopefully there'll be more and more of them as the as the years pass. And I'm sure your show will be going for years. So when you're absorbed in the post production world of creating Warcraft, do you have time to play games yeah. on the side? Uh, all I do in the free time that I do have is play XCOM 2. Oh, oh, interesting. Wow. Nice. Pretty much my go-to. That's my go-to escapism game. Do you name everybody uh, Warcraft characters within XCOM 2 then? No, I name them. I, name, I, I make them all look like my friends and crew members. <laughs> and then the people, the people that piss me off get made tanks and get thrown up front <laughs> as, my, uh, you know, as cover. And then, <laughs> and then everyone else that I like gets to stay behind and snipe. God, I had such a good time with XCOM 2. And then... I took a break because Stardew Valley, this dumb PC, Harvest Moon wannabe, completely consumed my life. And now going back to yeah. XCOM 2, I'm just, I'm so lost. I feel like I need to restart it because it's so brutal. It, it, it really is. You yeah, know, I mean, if you jump, if you jump in, in halfway through a campaign, you'll have kind of lost all your mojo. You absolutely have to go back to the beginning. Yeah, it's tough. This is a dumb, simple question, but what's your favorite game of all time, Duncan? Um, uh, it's, a, it's a tie. Ooh, it's a tie between three different games I'd, I'd say um, one by Bullfrog a company called Bullfrog from the UK that made a game called Syndicate Wars yeah yeah, yeah. Um, which was absolutely fantastic it was kind of a it, you were you were kind of the the brains behind four kind of Android like uh, bod, uh, sort of heavies down on the street you saw the you saw sort of a future city kind of a Blade Runner inspired city from an isometric viewpoint and you were in charge of, of four guys that you could basically upgrade, and you would basically just try and dominate sectors of the city um, using these four guys. Um, you could kind of up their weapons, up their technology, um, and then there was just kind of this constant wave of, of, of enemies that you were dealing with and missions that you had to accomplish. Did you ever check uh, out... That was a fantastic game. Did you ever check out Satellite Rain? Uh, it's a game that came out, I think, yes. this year, late last Rain. year? Yes, I've, I've played that. I've got that. It's, and... and he, they are absolutely inspired by, by what Syndicate, Syndicate Wars was. Hey, Duncan, you're really hardcore. You know yeah. Satellite Rain. That's amazing. Do you want a job? Yeah, and then, <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, another game, the, another of the three would be Speedball 2 Brutal Deluxe, which was by the Bitmap Brothers back in the day. Uh, mainly, on, I think it was on the Amiga. The, the, the Amiga version is the one that I loved. I know they've remade that game over the years, um, and they've tried to update it. Every time they update it, it just doesn't work. But for whatever reason, there was this magic... When they first when they first made Speedball 2 Brutal Deluxe, and it's a future sports game, uh, somewhere between I don't know, ice hockey, soccer, and uh, mixed martial arts. It's, it's just, <laughs> perfect. It's uh, <laughs> incredibly violent with a steel ball that they throw to each other. There's kind of a goal mouth that you have to get the ball through. In my opinion, it is the uh, it is the best future sport game that ever got made. Interesting, up there with wind jammers. Okay. And then finally. I think for my sort of nerdy RPG credentials, it would be um, Richard Garriott, Lord, sorry, Lord British Richard Garriott, <laughs> um, Exodus Ultima 3 in the, in the Ultima series. Is there a British theme running throughout all of these games? Well, I grew up there, so I kind of, you know, I, a lot of, the, a lot of my, my early gaming came from from the UK, from the UK, or just in Europe, and although that's not true, Lord British is actually from Austin, Texas. That's true. That's true. I take it back. That's <laughs> so completely wrong. He, he was faux. He's faux British. <laughs> Lord Austin doesn't sound nearly as cool, though. Really. Uh, so the speedball. Well, yeah, I, I think of, of of all three of those, he's the only one who has his own medieval castle. <laughs> that's true. As hardcore as it gets. Uh, so the speedball two film adaptation is that coming soon then? <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> no, Speedball 2 is, is massively, you know, it's just, it's just a great game. I wish, I wish there were a way to, to sort of get it right in, in a remake, but I just, I just don't know. They, they just never seem to be able to quite get it right. Yeah. Since, since it seems like your gaming knowledge runs pretty deep, I have a really nerdy question to ask you. Yeah. So in 2009, you released a movie called Moon, which I think everybody in the world loves. Everybody Fantastic in the universe. Fantastic film. I think yep. that's the way that works. Uh, there was <laughs> a game. Everybody loves it. Nobody's seen it. <laughs> <laughs> 
But there's a game released on the DS in 2009, also yeah. called Moon. Did you ever experience any confusion yeah. about that? Uh, no confusion, because not enough people saw my film for it to matter. Really? <laughs> but yeah. um, but I, um, I, I was familiar with it, and I, and I thought it was kind of weirdly synchronous and, and interesting. I don't think either of us knew that the other existed, um, but, but we both had a fascination, I think, with mining on the moon. <laughs> So you obviously being a big gamer, when you heard there was a Warcraft movie being made, did you kind of yeah. try to get that? Did, were you like, I'd like to take a shot at this? Yes. How did, I mean, how did okay, you get let's, involved? Let's get, let's get into the into the nerdy technicalities of it. I, I started and ran a guild for a game called Ultima Online for years. Um, and having run that guild for a couple of years through, throughout the beta for, for Ultima Online, um, as Ultima Online finally came to a close, with the kind of uh, the cataclysm of Lord British being assassinated in the game sure. and then uh, the world being overrun by demons. Um, we decided that we needed to find a new game to move to, um, and we moved um, en masse to World of Warcraft when it eventually opened up, um, and we, were sort of playing, we, we played that. So I became a fan of World of Warcraft um, because, of, because of my guild, but I had actually already played all of the real-time strategy games from Orcs and Humans um, on through, because I used to bounce back and forth between Warcraft real-time strategy games and Command and Conquer back when those kind of, there was kind of an arms race in real-time strategy, and those two games were kind of going at it. Yeah. Since you're a fan of the RTS games, do you miss the RTS Warcrafts? Do you feel like World of Warcraft has just kind of consumed too much of the World Warcraft lore? Uh, I mean, all of us, it's, it's, it's kind of crazy how many real, serious, hardcore fans of, of Warcraft were involved in the making of the movie. Yeah. Um, both myself, Bill Westenhofer, who was the VFX supervisor, Jeff White and Jason Smith, who were the sort of heads of, of the uh, VFX at ILM, uh, Rob Kaczynski, who plays Orgrim Doomhammer in the movie, all of us were hardcore Warcraft players. So... We keep, you know, we have this sort of constant contact with the guys at Blizzard, and we're all sort of saying, "Hey, you know, it'd be really cool. Why don't you guys make a? Why don't you make a, a new, a new uh, RTS for the iPad or something like that? Could you just make a new Warcraft RTS? Because we really <laughs> want to play one." So they were getting bugged from us all the time to make a new RTS. Please keep bugging them. We'd really appreciate it. But do you want to just walk <laughs> us through, like, can you walk us through this, those early meetings uh, with Blizzard? What you felt like their priorities were uh, as far as the direction of the film? Absolutely. I mean, you know, they, they had been, I think they, I think since the very beginning of World of Warcraft, about 10 years ago, they had been talking about making the movie. And then I know that Legendary got involved very early on and um, started working with Blizzard to make the movie. Sam, they, they, they got Sam Raimi attached and were working with him for, I think, a couple of years on development of, of, of something. And they just never seemed to manage to, you know, think the, 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 the things just didn't dovetail between what, what Sam wanted and what, what you know, Blizzard and other, other interest, in, in, interest groups wanted the film to be. So they just couldn't get it started. Um, eventually, Sam went off to go and do uh, Wizard of Oz, I believe. And um, I had been a fan. Obviously, you can kind of get the sense of, of my fandom for these kind of things. I had been following along because I had sort of contacts at, at, at Blizzard and places. And I was saying, hey, what's going on with this movie? I'm really looking forward to seeing it. You know, uh, how's, how's it all going? Is it going to happen? We're going to watch it. We're going to have a Warcraft movie soon. So I was bugging them constantly and then found out that it had basically fallen off the tracks a little bit. And uh, Source Code had just come out and was, you know, being pretty well received. So I had kind of two movies in a row that were doing okay. And I said, look, I know I've only done sort of two smaller films, but if I could come and have a meeting, I would really, really love to do this movie. I think I could do something with it. And um, there was a little bit of a passing of time. And then eventually I got a phone call saying, you know, why don't you, uh, you know, you want to have a look at this script that we've got? We, you know, we'd like to talk to you about it. And I read it, and it was, a, it was a draft that they'd been working on after Sam had left hmm. for a new approach to the Warcraft movie. And it was basically going back to the very first game, Orcs and Humans, and that first contact moment between Orcs and Humans, which made absolute sense. Um, and I sort of read the script, and I was a little disappointed because the one thing that, you know, that to me, one of the things that Warcraft does is, or certainly did, is it takes the fantasy tropes and the expectations and just puts a little twist on it, makes, a little, makes things a little bit different. You know, if you're used to Tolkien and you're used to humans and very human-looking elves all being the good guys and then the monsters and the ugly things are the bad guys, that's kind of the fantasy that most people know. 
And what Warcraft did in the early games is allow you to play as the orcs, as the monsters, and to be the hero on that side, and to have your own storylines where you're the hero, where you save the world for the orcs. And that's, um, you know, that was their twist. That's the thing that they did. And not to have that in the script, to me, was, was sacrilegious. That's not Warcraft anymore. So my pitch was, look, I would love to do this movie. I like elements of this script, but you really need to get the audience to be as comfortable and care as much for the orcs as you do for the humans. And that obviously resonated with Blizzard. They felt like, yes, that's what we've been missing. And I did a rewrite, and I you know, integrated that into the, into the script, and, uh, and everyone got very excited. Nice. Yeah, I think like in interviews, Sam Raimi had mentioned that he was really put off or kind of, and it was really noticeable how much of like veto power Blizzard had in terms of the script and the direction of the film. Can you talk about like yeah. how much power Chris Metzen and the other folks at Blizzard have in the direction of this movie ultimately? Well, look, I mean, the thing we have to remember is that they've been making these games successfully with, uh, you know, the, with the love and uh, support of their fan base for 20 years. This is a huge, huge business for them. Um, and they don't want some movie coming in and pooping on everything they worked so hard on. <laughs> um, I get that. And my, you know, my, you know, as a fan, I don't want that either. So I think it's, it's, you know, for me, it's an awful lot easier to come in and work copacetically with Blizzard because I kind of know what they care about. Sure. Um, and as much as possible, I'm in sync with that, and I want the same things. So it makes my job much, much smoother. If you're coming at it from a completely different angle and you're fighting you know, what, what they see as being what makes Warcraft what it is, I can see that being very frustrating for both parties. Yeah. Uh, so, Duncan, as a World of Warcraft player, did you hide your character in the movie? Or is he, does he have a, or he or she, not, whatever you played? I did, not, I did not hide my character, but there is a very graphic and obvious shout out to my guild. <laughs> graphic. Interesting. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, it's just an infinite world of Easter eggs. The Warcraft universe is so big. I mean, how much were yeah. you focused on slipping in little things for the fans versus just trying to treat it like a more serious take on this fantasy story? Look, there's, there's, there's basically two, two versions of me that you get when I, when I have to do press and I have to do interviews. There's the version which obviously has to make it very clear that this is a movie which is absolutely for everyone, appeals to everyone, has a, has a narrative and characters which you don't have to have any pre-knowledge you know knowledge of, and that is true. But for you, who are sort of more game-centric and understand the sort of excitement that people love Warcraft are going to have for this, there is so much buried in there and just and just woven throughout the fabric of the movie that is going to get that are going to get fans excited whether they're going to go to the lion's pride tavern whether they're going to see you know just just places that they've been and 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 spent weeks months years of their life in um they're going to get to actually see these places as real sumptuous you know places that they'll they'll just they'll just feel they'll feel at home that's what i wanted I wanted yeah. to make the movie in such a way that it absolutely works as a movie in its own right. But for those people who know about Warcraft, they're going to feel like they've gone home. Nice. So you mentioned how, you know, the film takes place between like the first contact between orcs and humans and kind of that storyline going back yeah. to the early days of the RTSs. I mean, was it also yeah. consideration to think of, hey, maybe we might have a franchise here on our hands. Let's leave plenty of room to grow. We can eventually get to the Warcraft 3 later storylines, etc. Um. You know, I think, I think everything is utterly dependent on, on how this film does. I think just for the fun of it, because you can't help yourself, when I was you know, working with Chris Metzen a, a bit, we talked about, okay, if we did get the chance to do three, three movies, what would those three movies be? And, and we kind of have a sense of what those three movies would be. Anything beyond that is absolutely possible, but all things are going to be dependent on, on people enjoying and wanting more after they've seen this movie. Yeah. I mean, Source Code was an ambitious film. Moon is an ambitious film. This just must be leaps and bounds beyond that. And I'm wondering, just as a filmmaker, what has it been like for you? What's, uh, what's this journey been like? Well, I mean, I think as much as I may have consciously told myself I, I knew what I was jumping into with this movie, I think the, the marathon nature of this is something I wasn't ready for. It's th it was three and a half years. Um, wow. You know, source code, we, we didn't even have a script. 
and by the time we'd finished the script and shot the film and it was finished and we'd edited it, it was 12 months. Wow. We, we finished it in a year. Sor source code, again, was, was short, massively shorter in comparison to, to Warcraft. But Warcraft was three and a half years. And I think trying to maintain the quality control and the focus and the energy and just the drive for three and a half years on one project is, is really, really hard work. It's taxing. But, you know, we did it, and, and I'm, I'm, ex I'm proud of it. And, and, um, and now I just can't wait for June because I just want people to see it. Yeah. You know, the, the, the Internet is a, is, a hard, is a hard, hard place to live when you're, when, you're, when you're basically hearing people talking about marketing but who haven't actually seen the movie yet. Yeah, I'd love to – what is your sense of, like, the Warcraft community and their thoughts on the film? And do you have, like – do you have misconceptions you want to clear up? I think they are absolutely justified. I think, I think the fans of Warcraft, more than any other, any other game universe, are absolutely justified in feeling an ownership for something that they've spent so much of their time in. I don't think, you know, whether it's Assassin's Creed or Angry Birds or, you know, even Halo, I don't think people have spent as much time in, in as... In as um, in, in as long-term a way as they have in the Warcraft universe. Yeah. You know, I think people who play War World of Warcraft, their m marriages have been made and broken <laughs> for the amount of time that people have played that game. Um, so I think, you know, there is, a, there, is a, it, there is a real sense of ownership that I think has been, o that has been earned, and, and, I have, you know, I, and I respect that because I, I understand where it comes from. And do you feel like they're skeptical about some things? Are there some things you want to drive home just to make it clear that, you know, this movie is not going to be this way that the marketing might have hinted that it's going to be or anything like that? I don't know. I mean, I, you know, I think, the, I think the fan base is just, is just, they just want to see the movie now. I mean, I think, you know, they've waited such a long time. The movie, you know, they knew, of, they knew about a movie being made for such a long time and it just took such a long time to happen that I think there was a real skepticism that it ever would. Even the first couple of years of us, we, we went to BlizzCon three times. And I think <laughs> the first two times they were like, yeah, we'll, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll wait and see. We'll see it when it comes out, if it ever comes out. Um, <laughs> so I think, I think there was a real skepticism from that audience. And again, it's justified. You know, they, vaporware is a real thing. <laughs> so I know that they were. I know that they're concerned. I know that they were concerned. But we've made a film. We're proud of it, and we just. I just desperately wanted to get out there so people can make up their minds for themselves. Yeah, when Blizzard first got out of the gate, uh, their announcement. I remember it with just them just saying, "We're going to make a really good movie, no matter what. We're making a good movie." But then learning about that veto power that they had, and thinking about like yeah. they are such perfectionists. I mean, they canceled Warcraft Adventures, Starcraft right. Ghost. Yeah. They have a history of yeah. just canceling things that aren't up to the like quality yeah. bar that they want to set. So it's amazing you guys got it through production. I, I, like I said, it's been an exhausting process, and, <laughs> and I, think I'm a, I think I'm a better politician and negotiator than I would have been had I not done it. Um, <laughs> I learned an awful lot of skills. I'll be, I'll be running for the Senate, I'm sure, after this. <laughs> uh, no, I mean, it's, 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 you, really, you really have to, you know, you have to you, as long as you always respect and appreciate why it means so much to the people that it does mean something to, um, I, I think that helps, that helps keep you sane and also helps, you know, just, uh, you know, calibrate your, your own, you know, uh, emotional state about something. I may think something is absolutely the way to do it, and somebody else may think it's absolutely not the way to do it, but I know that I need to take the time to explain why I'm right for the movie, that it's the right reason to do something. Yeah. Because there is, you know, like I said, there's 20 years of lore, it's a huge business, and there's, an, there's a massive fan base that really cares about things being done right. Yeah. So what are your plans for the premiere? Are you going to get together with the development team to send this baby off? My plans for the premiere, <laughs> my plans for the premiere is my wife is due uh, to have our first baby in June. Oh, which wow. Is when the film comes out. So I'm hoping if we can get the timing right, we can do like a, like a, like a, a horde alliance choice for, uh, what, what, for what our <laughs> child is going to be. Good God. <laughs> Perfect. Are you going to bring your guild to I the premiere? Really do that. That's not actually going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> Are you going to have your guild at the premiere? Um, I don't know. I don't know if I'm ready for that. <laughs> you can't meet everybody. You, you, how many, how many real, sort of, uh, real, real world meetups have you done with your guilds before? <laughs> I've done one and it went okay. All right. There yeah. we go. Oh, okay. 
<laughs> well, no. Uh, I think mine, my, mine are a little crazier than yours. But. <laughs> <laughs> Might want to do it at the pub or something. Yeah, it makes sense. All right, but hey, yeah. Duncan, thank you so much for joining us, man. Like, you really, I feel like you've got this gigantic blockbuster under your belt now. You've really proven to Hollywood and the rest of the world that like, you can make anything at this point, right? I don't know, but uh, I guess the one thing I'm hoping is that I is, is I would like to be I would love this to be the film that proves that you can make really solid movies based on video games because there is absolutely no reason why it can't be done. Yeah, here, here. We would absolutely love to see it. Well, best of luck with the launch. Uh, we look forward to seeing the movie and hearing the feedback and seeing this whole saga unfold. So thanks again for your time, Duncan. Right. Yeah, thanks, Duncan. Thank you. Thank right. you. Take care. Bye, Reiner. What a good chat. Yeah, that was great. Are you what feeling a huge more confident? gamer? Yeah, I am. I, I I can't wait to see this film. Cool. You don't have to say it. he's not on the line anymore. I know, but I mean, he said all the right things. I mean, he pressed the right He buttons. really did. Yes. All right. But thank you for watching or listening to this episode of the Game Informer Show. Be sure to tune in next week. We'll have a new episode waiting for you. Bye, everybody.